<laughs> so guys, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Alright, um, how do we even start this? So, today we're going to be uh, installing just a simple dual battery system in the Foz, the Ubu Foz. So I'll get you to come over here and take a look. <laughs> so we've just got the uh, XTM dual battery isolator kit, um, which comes with, this is extra stuff I bought, it comes with positive cable, ground cable for the second battery. Okay. Yeah? You need this to check the bottom. Awesome. Good. You hold on to that then. We've got our dual battery isolator. You can see that there? Oh yeah, close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got some lugs, some uh, shrink wrap. I've gone out and buy, because it doesn't come with fuses. I've bought mm. two inline fuse holders, 60 amp maxi fuses. Both of them with 40 amp fuses, so they can hold up to 60. And then I've also got these waterproof solder joiners. I don't know where they're big enough for the cable. Um, only says 6.9 mil, but we'll, we'll have a go at it. So we'll go over to the car and have a look at how we're actually gonna do it, and then we'll get into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the, uh, in the engine bay first, and I'll talk through how we're gonna wire it up. So what we need to do is start with our positive cable on here. So we've got our positive cable that's gonna run along. We're gonna cable tie here. If we come to this side, you'll be able to see. We're gonna cable tie our positive cable along this line with the rest of the wiring. Up the back, we're gonna attach the voltage sensitive relay somewhere up here. So in between the positive and the voltage sensitive relay, we're gonna add a fuse in there so that if the battery has a surge in power, that fuse is protecting it and it's not gonna get too far. We're gonna add the voltage sensitive relay in here. We're gonna run the positive cable down through this wire, um, wire, through this firewall here, and then we'll come around. Come on, I'll take shot. <laughs> and then we'll run it down through here, through the firewall down. We've taken the trim off, so we're gonna run it along here. That just goes straight through the back, through that back door as well, down under there, under there. And then we'll have it come out here and come up somewhere in the back here where I'm gonna have my battery box so I can just hook it up and take it off as I please. So, um, we'll just move on. So basically how a voltage sensitive relay works, dual battery isolators what it's called on here, but same thing, is um, it's for older cars that have, don't have a smart alternator, so they uh, just have a fixed current voltage that's being put out. So most alternators uh, will put out about 14.4 volts when the car's turned on and when it's under load, and they'll just put out that straight 14.4 and it won't change. Newer cars have a fluctuating alternator that will change based on the load that the car's needing power for. And so if you have a newer car with a smart uh, alternator, you're gonna need a DC-DC charger that can um, analyze that voltage. But for just an older car that has a fixed rate volt, um, alternator, Basically what happens, how it works, is when the car turns on and the alternator starts working, so your crank battery is getting, rather than sitting at 12.6 volts, your crank battery is getting 14.4 volts. Uh, when that happens, this isolator will cut in at 14, or uh, at, what is it? I should say it somewhere on here. That's right. It will cut in around 13 volts, I think. And then, so it'll allow then that current to be flowing back to the uh, second battery. But as soon as you turn the car off and the alternator stops working and the voltage drops back down to 12.6 volts, uh, this isolator will turn off and it will disconnect the current. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then you're not gonna get uh, any bleed through between the batteries. So basically it acts as a circuit breaker that depends on voltage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a marker to mark out under here where I'm going to put the screw, uh, where I'm going to put the screws and then I'll drill those holes in and uh, attach the screws and then we'll be able to attach the um, voltage sensitive relay to the um, back plate. Then we can start with our wire. There we go, got our four dots. Can get a screw through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so we've got our dual battery isolator in. We just put it up the back of the engine bay so we can go fuse to isolator, fuse down through the firewall just there. And Sam's just about to measure out with a marker. Gonna, yeah, we're just gonna mark it where we want this first fuse. So we're just gonna run it through, sort of work from the battery backwards. So we're gonna have to on that terminal there. Where do you want the fuse? If you want around, um, maybe in between. Yeah, here I reckon we here. try and get the fuse somewhere here, right, so, if we so mark that it roughly I'll, there, so it's not pulling we'll straight. Know where to cut. Perfect. Awesome. So what we've got here is we've got our battery end lug coming. We this one was a bit. Well, as you can see, it's a bit of a dodgy connection. We're going to fix that up later. That's just connecting straight to the fuse um, because we didn't we didn't have a terminal that was big enough to be able to get it so we went we uh made our own crimp out of some metal <laughs> and then we soldered it and then we shrink wrapped it but it's kind of come out it's not fixing it's kind of come out a little bit dodge as you can see but right. that's okay we'll fix it up um and then we've got our fuse coming to this end we're going to add a lug on there to go into the vsr and sam is just adding that end for the other lug on the vsr and then we'll run it to the back and put another fuse on the second battery just um sort of finish off the rest of the lugs here on the fuse side of things. And then we've got two more on the uh, longer lead that's gonna run through to the thing. So we just popped it on after our first little dodgy connection where we're gonna <laughs> fix that up with some tape at the end. The other ones are heaps easier, just pop that on. And then we've got this really big oversized crimper <laughs> and we just crimp down a six, six mil, I believe it is. Yeah, pop the shrimp rack on, shrimp, shrimp wrap. Shrimp, just, shrimp, shrimp rack. rack. Put the shrimp rack on. Shrink. Put some shrimp rack on the barbie. <laughs> And, and then, then um, melt that down. Then melt that down, and, and then off we go. Start much, much better in. than this one. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's great. Although that doesn't look this too bad on video, to be honest. Engineering. Yeah. Nice. Come at me, built not bought. Whatever his name is. <laughs> Just wanted to take a second to talk about uh, wire sizes and um, what the current's going to be. What, what's going to be happening with the current? Um, so this came in the kit. I think when I measured this up, it's not quite six. Um, gauge wire, so 6AWG or 6BNS, um, but it's also not 8, so it's uncommon, but I think that this is roughly in between like a 7AWG, 7BNS, um, um, so this is not the thickest cable you could use, you could go down to, some people put in like 2BNS, which is quite thick, quite chunky, um, this one only measures up to about 10 mil squared, I think, maybe a, a little larger. Um, but what that means is that because it's uh, not as thick cable and it's going over a longer distance, is we are gonna get some voltage drop, I'm assuming, especially because we've then got the two fuses in there with the connections. Um, but also the wiring on the fuses, the two fuse holders, um, the reason I got them was because it was the thickest wire that I could get for the fuses. Um, to go on either side of the fuse, um, but it's only eight AWG. So um, we're gonna get some voltage drop uh, from those connections, uh, but also the fact that this is going over probably about, I don't know, maybe like three meters distance, um, and it's not the thickest wire you could use. Um, there will be some voltage drop. So when you think about wire um, and the current running through it, it's kind of similar to uh, water running through a tap. So um, obviously if you have a tap and then a long pipe, uh, the pressure at the start of that tap is going to uh, be less by the end of the time you get through the pipe. Like the water pressure is gonna go over a long distance of time. Same with wire. So the longer you've got that power running through the wire, uh, the more voltage drop you're gonna get. Specifically with uh, current, it works if you've got a larger wire, there's less voltage drop because there's I think the way it works is that there's more um, copper for the current to actually travel through, and so it's not having to work as hard to get through. Whereas if you've only got a smaller amount of space, um, the current is trying to work harder to get through because um, it doesn't allow as many amps to get through before it starts to actually heat the wire up, and then that's why you end up with car fires and stuff if your wire's not thick enough. So yeah, this is about just bigger than eight gauge wire. Um, so that should do the trick for what we're um, doing, especially because I don't, uh, I don't plan on having um, the battery having to draw from you know 50%. I don't think I'll let it get that low uh, with my charging, so it shouldn't be pulling too much current through. But either way, um, this 
wire is rated up to around 50, 60 amps, I think. Um, and I've got my 40 amp fuses in there. So we should be good by my rough calculations that are probably not super accurate. Um, the battery will, for the most part, be pulling about 30 amps. So we should be good with this wire. If you're gonna be constantly draining your battery down, um, then you're gonna wanna get thicker wire, or if you don't want any voltage drop and you wanna get that 14.4 volts the whole way, then you're probably gonna want some thicker wire and dropping down to maybe, yeah, two gauge or um, even four gauge is it's not bad. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut a hole through the firewall. We've got, uh, Sam's <laughs> just taking the, um, voltage sensitive relay off the back plate again so we can start to hook it up. But we're gonna cut a hole in the firewall, run the cable through to the back just so we can measure it out. And then we might attach it all up just to make sure it's all the right lengths. And then we're gonna put the fuse at the back next to the second battery, the second fuse. Good. If you're trying to... Um... Oh, thanks, mate. Look at that. We all need our sun protection. Luke has got my motorbike helmet as his. Very cool. And you're wearing my hat, I'm wearing your hat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so we've been trying to just feed the the lead or the wire through the firewall, trying to get it through this this spot so here. We've literally just been trying to cut a hole in that and get it through. Which didn't work so well, it was quite high up, but then we discovered there was a plug right next to it that we could feed through right in here. So always look for the plug so in the firewall. Look for the plug in the firewall first. Cut your way in. And what we're gonna do now is cut a hole through that, feed it through, and that way we can still replug it. So we're not gonna leave it open like that. Yeah. We're just gonna try and replug it first. So if you've got an Ubu Forester, um, or any car. Or any Most car. cars probably actually have them, I guess. Just look for that. Look for that. So thing. look for a little plug that might have a hole in the firewall. It's easy to get to because that comes out in the perfect spot, whereas the other one is like almost impossible to get to behind all the clutch mechanisms and everything. So, yeah, look out for that. So what we've got here is we're running from the battery, we've got our fuse, so the voltage reader is now set up, it's not plugged in so it's not live. We're running through there down to the firewall, if you come around this side you'll see. We've come through the firewall, down side here, Fox under the trim, so we haven't put the trim back on there, come through along the same one. We've come through the trim here and up down next to the seat through behind there. And as you can see, we've ripped the styrofoam out. So it's gonna come out along this section here and we'll just, we'll ground the black wire to the back there and then we'll have the, the ground and the positive wire just coming right there. We've basically finished it. Um, Sam had to just uh, go, so he um, he's just left now, but I'll take you through um, what we've done. Uh, I'll show it to you and we'll turn the car on. We tested it already and it seems to be running, but I'm just gonna take the multimeter around to a few different points and test that uh, we're getting the right voltage at each, each join. So I'll have a look at that. We've got our battery here, our crank battery. We've got it hooked up to there. So we'll test here that we're getting 14.4 volts when the car's on and the alternator's running. And we've got our fuse here, 40 amp fuse going, our dodgy connection there, we might have to change a little bit. Change that up here. I'm gonna make sure this little red light's turning on, which means the alternator's, um, it's, it's getting enough voltage from the battery, and so then it's sending that through. It's gonna go through here. All the trim's back on, so the wire's hidden underneath there. It's coming through the back. I still haven't put the styrofoam back in. So then we've got it coming out here. We've got our second connection, our fuse. I need to fix this up as well because we didn't have the right... Um, we just messed it up, so I'm going to have to redo this connection, but that's all right. Um, this is just testing it for now. It won't be permanent. So we've got our positive here coming through another 40 amp fuse, and then we've got our ground mounted to the body. Now, because of the way that the Subaru uh, is set up, um, they don't have a separate chassis and body. They've got a subframe and then I've got, they've got a unibody, which is, um, has the chassis rails built into the actual body. So the ground for the crank battery is mounted to the body. There's one to the body and one to the engine, I think. And so we've just got ours here mounted to the back of the unibody as well. 
So that should uh, have continuity throughout the body for that ground. Um, I don't think there's a need to run a second black wire along, although if we need to, we can just run a negative wire from the battery back to the front terminal. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the voltage at the front, we're gonna test the voltage at the back, and we're gonna make sure that that light is working so that we can see the alternators putting extra power through and then we're getting enough charge at the back. So we're just testing the front battery now, the car's running. Make sure everything's fine at the front end. Yep, got 14.37 volts, close enough to 14.4. So the alternator's charging the battery at the moment. If you look in here, you can see we've got that red light on. We've got that red light on, which means that we're getting enough voltage to turn the isolator on. So that should be open now and letting the rest of the power flow through. So here I've got my multimeter. I'm just gonna test the rear end of the uh, dual battery system coming from the crank battery and through the isolator. So we might have a bit of voltage drop here, but it should be enough to be charging the battery. So let's just test and see. We've got 14 volts coming out the back through the multimeter. So I'm a bit sweaty, it's really hot today. So we've got about 14 volts coming out at the rear end, which means we've got a voltage drop of about 0.4 volts. Not sure how bad that is. I think that's probably okay and pretty standard, um, especially because it's only eight gauge wire. I didn't go down um, any further than that. Oh, actually, sorry. I think I've got six gauge. And I've got some eight gauge in there for the fuses. Um, but basically, We've got 14 volts coming back out the back, which should mean that the battery is getting charged okay, because the battery sits between 12.6 to 12.9 volts, which is how it should sit. That's the voltage it should be um, charged at when healthy. And so if we've got 14 volts coming out the back, then that's gonna be charging that up as we're driving. Um, the other thing is the car is just sitting, sitting and idling. Um, and so while it's idling, it's not gonna be producing as much power because the alternator's not working as hard or it might be, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it might not turn on sometimes. I think it was okay, but um, yeah, just when you're driving around the alternator is probably gonna be working harder um, and definitely gonna be producing that power. So you might get a bit more voltage in here rather than just sitting at idle, but who knows, we'd have to drive around and test it. For now, I'm pretty content with that, that there's 14 volts coming through the back, um, especially uh, with the length that we've gone. So yeah, it's good. We're gonna put the panels back in the back uh, get the styrofoam back in and then we should be good. All right So I just went for a little trip because I wanted to fix up those few little dodgy connections So I've just been to J car. I've got uh, two Anderson plugs um, for the back to actually plug into the battery box I thought that would be better than just having two exposed um, terminals uh, and then I've also went and got the um, 8 mil Oh, no, sorry not 8 mil uh, six AWG butt terminals. So that'll be for those middle connections and some heat shrink to go over the top. And then I also got some um, more uh, eye terminals that are 10 mils so they can actually fit on. So, yep, should be good. I'll go back and I'll fit it all up. We've got one butt terminal on there. Just need to crimp this bad boy. Get in there, buddy. All right, ah, much better. All right, so we got some nice solid crimps there. Run our heat shrink over it. Perfect. There you have it. We've got our crimped join, much better, much more solid. What we've got now is I'm just about to connect this Anderson plug. Don't want to fray it. I watch my fingers, not the camera. So we've got the Anderson plug in that'll go in here. So in this way, and then that'll connect to the battery. So We'll just crimp this terminal up as well. So as you can see, uh, rather than have terminals on the end, I've changed it into an Anderson plug. We've got our fuse tool there, I've fixed up this. 
And that Anderson plug can just go directly into the battery. So on the front, we've got the same thing. We've got our fuse. Uh, and I just redid this section here. So that's the same thing. That's just got a butt terminal the whole way through. The reason it looks spiky is because I've crimped that down. So these wires aren't going anywhere. Heat shrink on there, straight to our voltage sensitive relay and then through the firewall. I'm yet to cable tie that. Can do it in a second, keep it up there. And then gonna cable tie this as well along with this main positive lead. So, yep, that's it.